time to talk vintage, <clears throat> time to talk vintage and antiques. Today we're going to be looking at pricing. There were a lot of questions about pricing on the survey, which as a reminder, you, you can still take the survey and I will post a link to that. Thank you to everyone who took the time to answer the survey. I really, really appreciate it. I hope that um, I'm helping you with, with these questions and I would just love it if you would give me a thumbs up and let me know that after you watch the video that it was helpful to you and that you would like to see more, okay? I'm trying to gauge the my audience on how well these videos are resonating with you, okay? <clears throat> Some of the questions that you had about pricing were, how do you price an item when you can't find the same or similar item? And I guess before I read the other questions, I'm gonna answer that one. Um, I'm going to provide you with some resources. I'm going to tell you about resources and I have another free printable for you that lists the resources. Most of them are free. Some of them are paid. But if you exhaust all those resources and still aren't able to determine the value of, of your item, maybe you have something really extraordinary, something very rare. In that case, I would recommend hanging on to it until you come across the information or a person who can help you to determine what that value is. I don't recommend doing that with a lot of items. Um, your goal should be to be moving as many items out of your house, out of your storage, out of your garage, out of your business as you can. The goal is to sell, sell, sell and make money. So one thing that I really want to encourage you in, and that is you don't have to ex get every last drop of value out of all of the vintage and antiques that you're selling. It's okay to underprice things purposely or not and allow someone else to either get a great buy or to flip it themselves and get a little bit of value out of it for their business, right? Like I said, you want to keep things moving. You want to be selling as quickly as possible. And so that means not wringing every last drop of value out of all of the vintage and item, vintage and antique items that you're selling, okay? That's my personal philosophy. Keep it moving. You, it doesn't, you don't have to find out what the absolute highest price is or highest value is for something and then slap that on your item. Chances are it's gonna sit around for a while. That doesn't mean that you need to keep your prices low. It just means you wanna keep them right at market value, at the value for your market. And that will take a little bit of research and a little bit of time and testing also, okay? So other questions were, um, how often do I run sales? Do I feel like prices on eBay are down? Um, my shop runs at least two, usually three sales every year where they encourage all the dealers to participate. And so I do participate and those are 20, I do 20% off and it's usually for a weekend or for a week. And I do find them to be very profitable. I, I do encourage you to participate in those if your um, antique shop is running them. I also mark items down. So after, if an item has been in my booth for longer than six months, I will start marking it down at that point. I mark all my tags by year. So the prefix for my tags this year is 20, 20 dash and then whatever the inventory number is. So I know how long items have been in my booth and I don't want them to be there any longer than a year. A year is like a really long time in my book. I want to keep things moving. Hi, Charmaine. Yeah, thanks for saying hi. Anybody else who's watching, go ahead, say hi. That's awesome. <clears throat> okay, so back to the point, which is um, you want to keep your merchandise moving. So in my book, if something's been in my booth for six months or longer, I'm going to start marking it down. 
to the lowest point that I can live with it and, and try to sell it that way, okay? All right, and then the other question was, um, do I feel like eBay pricing prices are down? And I honestly, I'm not, um, I'm not probably, I, I don't have that feeling. I was gonna say I'm not on there enough. I am actually on there quite a lot. I do not get the feeling that prices are down. I'm sure they are for some things since we're going through a very weird, uncertain time right now. Um, but I think that they are probably going to level back up to where they were before the pandemic if they haven't already. That's just my feeling. In the comments, if you feel differently or your experience has been different, please leave a comment. We all wanna hear, okay? All right, now to pricing in general. Um, if you are an older dealer like me, <laughs> who's been selling for a really long time, I've been selling since 1995, um, then you know the prices are much lower now than back in 1995, right? So the downturn started in 2001 with 9-11 um, and then got worse in 2008 with the recession. So prices are definitely, definitely down. Um, and of course, things are gonna be different in different states, different regions of the country, even sometimes in different cities. I live in a state that has an up and a down state differential. So prices that you can get for items down in New York City are usually much higher than up here. I'm in upstate New York. Um, certain things sell better in certain areas. So mid-century modern does not sell for me at all here in upstate New York, but it will sell in New York City. It will actually even sell about an hour south of me in cities like Hudson, which are very trendy and filled with really interesting antique shops. So that's sort of generally like where we are with pricing. Um, I'm just checking my notes because I want to cover everything. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump into the resources that are available for you to use. I'm going to talk about the free ones first. I already mentioned eBay's sold listings. If you're not familiar with that, you go into eBay and right next to the search bar on the right hand side is a little button that says it's actually not a button it's a word it says advanced so you want to click on advanced and that opens up a new search page you're going to put in the item that you're looking for and then scroll down and click sold and then you're going to click continue or go or done or something like that right underneath sold and then eBay will show you the items like yours or similar to yours that have sold in the last month or two. And those are the most reliable uh, items as far as pricing. If you just search on the regular eBay page, you're gonna find out what people are hoping to get for their item. You wanna know what they're really getting. So the thing with eBay sold and getting your pricing information is that it's true. It gives you an idea around the country, right? Because there are so many people on eBay. Um, it won't, won't give you specific enough information to price your items for an antique booth perfectly, but it gives you information, right? So the act of pricing a vintage or antique is a process. You wanna get bits of information from a few different places and then sort of evaluate it and come up with a ballpark for pricing. It is absolutely not a science. It really is an art. I know a lot of you will agree with me on that. Okay, so eBay sold listings is the first place that I go if I don't know how to price something. That's really good information, great place to start, okay? Now, on my blog, I have 10 price guides. I've got Ironstone and Baskets and Pyrex and Enamelware and six others. They are absolutely free. You can use any or all of them. I'm gonna have in my freebie 
that, that you can print out when I'm done with the live, you'll be able to click right on the link and go right to my price guides, okay? So that's another free source. Another free source is my member library. So whenever you subscribe to my blog, you get access to my member library. And I have some price guides in there. I only have four right at the moment, but I am always working on new ones that I'm hoping to add. So those four are um, cameras, flower frogs, Fenton, and little golden books. Okay, absolutely free. All you have to do is subscribe. Um, okay, so another free resource is other dealers in your shop or other dealers that you know or the owner of your shop or dealers who work in your shop. Those are really great sources. So almost every time I go up to my antique booth, I have one or two items that I really want to get someone else's input on. And so I'll ask the owner or I'll ask a, another dealer who happens to be in the shop at that time, hey, what do you think about this? And usually I get some great information about it along with their idea of what the value might be. So take advantage of anybody in your life who is also a vintage seller. People love to help each other. That's my feeling. I love to help people and I feel that most other people feel the same way. So don't be afraid to ask, okay? So we've got eBay sold listings, my free price guides on the blog, my free price guides in the member library, other dealers and shop owners. Um, and then the fifth is Facebook groups, just like this one. A lot of you have posted pictures of things that you are uncertain about or you need more information about, and that's what the group is for. So keep doing that. We love seeing new vintage and antiques. We love talking about them and we love helping with pricing. So take advantage of that. There are other Facebook groups out there that specialize there are Facebook groups that specialize in selling on eBay or selling on Etsy or selling on Facebook Marketplace. Join those as well, but be sure to come back here. <laughs> I don't want you to leave us. Where This group is more general. It's filled with vintage sellers who sell in a variety of different um, marketplaces. <clears throat> okay, um, another free resource are my what's selling posts. I have been reporting what I've sold every single month for years and you can access those blog posts very easily. I'm gonna give you the link to them and you can see what's sold on each platform. So I separate where items sold, whether it's antique booth, <coughs> excuse me, antique booth, Etsy, eBay, my blog shop, so you know exactly where I sold so that you have an idea of what the values for your items are depending on where you're gonna sell them, okay? So my what's selling posts are a great place to, to look. And then I've been doing my vintage find posts lately. And in those, not my posts, videos. And in the videos, I tell you as I talk about each item, what I think they're worth. So it's a great way to get information. Take notes, take notes while you're watching the videos. Take notes while you're looking at the different blog posts. When I first got into the business, I had a, a huge, thick notebook full of notes. I would go, my husband and I, our, our, one of our favorite date nights was to go to the bookstore, get a coffee, find a comfy chair and read. He would read the sports pages from several different newspapers and I would gather a stack of price guides or just general guides to vintage and antiques and I would take notes on the items that I saw that were similar to what I had to sell and that's one of the ways that I learned because when I first started I didn't know a lot of people who were in the business. Um, so that's another free way to um, to get help with pricing. <laughs> go camp out at the bookstore or 
go to the library. My library has a huge section of guides to vintage and antiques. Take them out, read them, take notes. <clears throat> so that's the, the end of my free suggestions. Um, now for paid suggestions. Um, you guys know I have several eBooks, I have a course, and in a lot of them, I have pricing for the items that I'm talking about. So in my eBook 50 best-selling items, which is really geared towards antique booths, there's 50 items in there and I tell you what I sold the item for. I have a picture of one item and I tell you what I sold it for to give you a general idea of what that item is worth. <clears throat> in what to sell on eBay, I give you 10 categories of items that sell really well for me on eBay. For each category, I have six to seven pictures of those items and I tell you how much they sold for right and then in my brand new very vintage Christmas course I have price guides for each of the three collectibles that I talk about so I talk about mercury glass garlands pots houses and bottle brush trees and there's a price guide for each one of those so right now for the entire month of August I am running a special sale 25 percent off all of my digital products and my vintage, very vintage Christmas course, okay? So right now is a great time to get one or all three of those resources that have tons of information plus information on pricing. If that's what you really, you know, need to know right now in your life. <laughs> Go ahead and pick those up 25% off and it's your entire order, okay? It's not just one item, it's your entire order. And I ha will have links in the freebie okay that I'm going to link to later so that you can go and it, take a look at the courses and decide if you want them, okay? So those are my paid resources you can also obviously buy commercial price guides. You can go on Amazon or you can go to your local bookstore and uh, pick up a price guide on Pyrex or um, on Folk Art or whatever it is that you need a price for, you can buy a price guide, right? My hint is to go use the bookstore a little bit like a library or go to the library first and see if they have a price guide that will help you to price your item. And then the last question that somebody had was, should they purchase a service like WorthPoint? I actually had a trial to WorthPoint and while I think that it does provide some good information, I am not thrilled with the organization. Not, not, I don't mean the company, I mean the way everything is organized. And I'm not sure, I think the, the lowest price package is $69 a month, maybe 49, something like that. So that is a lot of money for an entire year of WorthPoint. So I'm not sure that that value outweighs the cost, um, the, the value that you might get from it. I would try the resources that I recommended first and see how that works for you. I suspect that you will get most of your pricing questions answered if you use those resources. They do have a, I, I believe it's a seven day trial period, WorthPoint does, so you can test it out before you pay for it, okay? And I actually do have an affiliate link. <laughs> So if you're interested in that, let me know and I'll send you the link. I'll get a, a few pennies for that. So while I'm still here and online, do you have any other questions relating to related to pricing? Any of you who are watching right now, go ahead. You can type the questions in. Otherwise, I am going to sign off. And thanks for joining me. All right, I'm gonna assume you don't have questions, but if you watch this video after it's already completely over, feel free to 
post questions because this video will stay in the Facebook group forever. <laughs> All right, it's been really fun and thanks for watching and as always, happy hunting.